Welcome to an introduction to Parkinson's disease. I'm Brian McGuinness, a Parkinson's disease clinical nurse specialist. And over the next few minutes, I hope to help you learn a little bit more about Parkinson's disease. This presentation has been created for people with Parkinson's disease, their friends and family, or anyone who's interested in knowing a little bit more about Parkinson's. My aim is to help you to understand a little bit more about what causes Parkinson's, how it is diagnosed and the treatments involved. And I hope after looking at this presentation that you will know a little bit more about Parkinson's and maybe be inspired to learn more. Over the next few minutes, we'll explore the causes, symptoms, diagnosis and treatment of Parkinson's disease. In particular, we will look at one of the long-term effects of the use of levodopa, the gold standard treatment in Parkinson's therapy. Parkinson's disease is named after James Parkinson, the first person to describe and publish an account of this condition. He described it as the shaking palsy back in 1817. Today, we refer to Parkinson's disease as Parkinson's or simply as PD. Parkinson's affects people from all walks of life. It affects men and women of any particular age, but usually the most common age is between 50 and 70 years. One of the main factors required for normal body movement is the production of dopamine, a neurochemical transmitter produced by cells in the brain. Dopamine is stored in the nerve endings and when a signal is required, dopamine moves from one nerve ending to the next and hence a body movement can take place, like moving a muscle. In people with Parkinson's disease, these brain cells lose the ability to produce enough dopamine required for normal movement. When the majority of these brain cells have been lost, the symptoms of Parkinson's disease come out. Scientists are still not entirely sure why these dopamine cells lose the ability to produce the chemical. Some believe that it's an inherited susceptibility to developing Parkinson's disease. Others feel that it's something in the environment that triggers the condition, like toxins or viral infections, but it's still not entirely understood. James Parkinson described this condition as the shaking palsy, or as most healthcare professionals call it, tremor. But not everyone with Parkinson's disease develops a tremor. Other symptoms that occur may be muscle stiffness, slowness in movement, and the change in way somebody walks. As a result, the person may develop shuffling steps, freezing of gait, and sometimes falling. The person's quality of life can be affected from the day-to-day -day activities that they need to do like, for instance, washing, dressing, buttoning, tying their laces, or even their handwriting may change. The symptoms of Parkinson's usually come on over time. They develop slowly over many years. They can be described as motor symptoms related to movement and non-motor symptoms not related to movement. But we have to remember each patient with Parkinson's is unique and develops an array of symptoms quite uniquely and individually. The motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease are the most obvious. They include muscle stiffness, tremor or shaking, slowness of movement and a change in the way somebody walks. The non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's are less obvious but just as troublesome. They include sweating, anxiety, constipation, low mood and panic attacks. We will look at some of those symptoms in more detail later on in this presentation. Doctors diagnose Parkinson's based on the signs and symptoms that the person may present with. Sometimes these symptoms can be quite obvious, like tremor or shuffling gait. Others can present with quite a challenge. People, often younger people, present with frozen shoulder or pain in their hand or pain down their leg. The doctor will ask many questions focusing on the examination of the nervous system. Unfortunately to date, no laboratory test has been devised to diagnose Parkinson's. A brain scan might be done just to rule out other conditions. An MRI scan is usually performed as well. A wide range of professionals can help people with PD. These can include specialist doctors and nurses, family physicians, physical therapists, community nurses, pharmacists, dietitians, social workers and speech therapists. Unfortunately, there is no cure for PD at present. 
However, there are a number of ways to treat it. The treatment available can be very effective in controlling the symptoms of PD. Medications are the most commonly used treatments, alongside physiotherapy, exercising and a good diet. Surgery can be used as PD advances to help control the symptoms, especially motor complications that can occur. The medications prescribed for PD usually work by either replacing the dopamine that has been lost or working like dopamine to help the brain produce normal movements. Replenishing dopamine levels is usually achieved with a drug called levodopa. Levodopa is converted into dopamine which increases the natural levels of dopamine. Today's levodopa treatment are enhanced with additional drugs that prevent the breakdown of levodopa, therefore getting more to the brain. Dopamine levels can also be increased by medications called monamine oxidase B inhibitors, which prevent dopamine from being broken down in the brain. The second approach is the use of drugs that mimic the action of dopamine. These drugs are called dopamine agonists. These agents activate the dopamine receptors on target cells in a manner comparable to dopamine itself. As a result, the message that dopamine usually carries is passed on, in effect, tricking the brain into thinking it's getting dopamine. Levodopa is a gold standard therapy for Parkinson's disease. Almost all patients with Parkinson's will require treatment with levodopa. Over time, and as Parkinson's progresses, the effect of levodopa can fade away. In other words, can wear off between doses. The person will describe the symptoms re-emerging before their next tablet is due. Other side effects that can occur is involuntary movements called dyskinesia. These can develop when the medications reach the peak in somebody's system or as they fade away. More specifically, wearing off is when the effect of levodopa fades away before the next dose of levodopa is due. And the person with PD experiences a return of his or her PD symptoms that lasts until the next dose of levodopa is taken and begins to work. This is one reason why it is important that people with PD take their medications at prescribed times, on time every time. PD specialists and doctors often use special terms that the person may not necessarily understand. For instance, on, off and freezing. On is when the person's medications are working well and off is when the medications aren't working so well. Freezing episodes relate to when the person is walking and they suddenly get stuck, their feet are frozen to the floor. Because wearing off is experienced as a result of a return of symptoms of Parkinson's disease, it is important to be aware of what symptoms occur. These symptoms can be motor symptoms related to movement or non-motor symptoms not related to movement. I will now go through the motor symptoms that are related to movement that occur in wearing off. People with PD often have a resting tremor or shaking affecting one or more limbs. It is one of the most common features of Parkinson's disease. Typically the shaking occurs at a rate of around four to five times a second. Gets worse when somebody with PD is stressed, worried or anxious or even excited but goes away during sleep. Difficulties with speech may occur. This may take the form of a lower volume, softness of voice, hoarseness, reduced articulation, or tremor or speaking in a monotone. Problems with balance usually affect people who have had Parkinson's disease for a long time. People with PD who have poor balance are at an increased risk of falls. People with Parkinson's disease can feel stiffness. It can be felt in the wrists, usually one side more than the other but stiffness can occur all over the body. This is known as cogwheel or lead pipe rigidity. People with Parkinson's can also have trouble starting movements or continuing movements. The automatic centre for movement in the brain sometimes switches off. Some people have reduced dexterity in one or both hands. This can make it difficult to complete tasks where fine motor control is needed, such as buttoning a shirt, using a knife and fork, or tying shoelaces. When the increased muscle tone and rigidity is severe, muscle cramping can develop. Cramping commonly affects the legs, calves, shoulders or arms and often occurs at night. Getting up from a chair or from a low level, such as getting out of a bed or a low couch, can be troublesome for people with PD. 
they have to think about the movement more and break it down into stages. People with PD can feel weak and tired and often fatigue easily. This can be related to a poor night's sleep, excessive daytime sleepiness or the rigidity and slowness of movement. Although the movement symptoms related to wearing off in Parkinson's are the most obvious, the non-movement related symptoms can be the most troublesome. I will now go through the non-motor symptoms that occur in wearing off. Some people experience panic attacks where they feel intense fear or worry, which can manifest itself physically in such ways as a racing heart, dizziness or shortness of breath. Panic attacks most often occur during the wearing off phase. People with PD can have an increase in sweating. This is due to a disturbance in the autonomic nervous system. Skin oils can also be commonly secreted. This can become very uncomfortable for the person and they may even have to change their clothes several times a day. Mood changes are common in Parkinson's disease, particularly the development of low mood, although major depression is rare. However, people with PD may look depressed due to a reduced degree of facial expression. But once depression is recognised and treated, the person with PD recovers well. People with PD can also experience changes in sensation, such as numbness, tingling or pins and needles. This is often of their fingers and toes. Anxiety symptoms, such as the feeling of worry, are common in Parkinson's and can often show up before movement-related symptoms occur. Anxiety can contribute to poor sleep for people with Parkinson's. Sometimes a vicious circle emerges, where anxiety leads to a worsening of movement symptoms and the worsening of movement symptoms can make people feel more anxious. Some people with Parkinson's disease complain of poor attention, a slowness of thinking and finding it difficult to concentrate. They often describe it as a cloudy mind or that their thinking is dull. Some people with PD feel that their hands and legs are freezing, although a change in temperature may not be detected by their doctor. Others complain of feelings of warmth, which can be accompanied by flushing of the skin. Discomfort in and around the abdomen has also been reported by people with Parkinson's who have developed a wearing off. They can describe it as a butterfly type sensation or even a burning sensation. Pain can affect up to half of the people with PD. People with Parkinson's disease can experience aching all over the body. Sometimes the aching moves from sight to sight. Some people also report the inner feeling of restlessness. Wearing off symptoms may be difficult to identify and they may be very subtle at first. Your PD nurse specialist and doctor will determine if you have wearing off by the symptoms that you tell them. There are a variety of approaches used in the management of the symptoms of wearing off. Everyone is an individual and should be assessed accordingly. The main approach is to enhance the effect of levodopa, making it last longer. So remember, you are not alone. If you have PD or know somebody who does, there is a lot of information and support available. You can log on to the www.wearingoff.com website for further information. You can also contact your local support group, the Parkinson's UK or the Parkinson's Association of Ireland. Thank you for taking the time and watching this presentation and I hope you've learned a lot from it.